Hey guys, welcome back. Today, a blast from the past, the Lion Master Challenger 4664. So I found this at the local train shop. It is a new in box Lion Master Challenger. And let's just dive right into it. Uh, we're gonna open this up and check it out. And then we'll go and talk a little bit more about the details of this model. So we're just gonna open this nearly 20 year old tape here. What's cool about this is again, nearly 20 years old now. Check it out, Lion Master, wow. So most of the Lion old boxes these days obviously are just a solid orange. Looks like this has got some unique artwork on it. Oops. Check that out. Wow. Definitely don't see that anymore. Lion Master 4664 Challenger. Turn around here and look at some of the details in the box. All right, let's go ahead and open this up, check it out. All right. So here we have instruction manual, extra traction tires. Very nice. Nicely wrapped here. So here we have our engine. Wow, this is all die cast construction. Super heavy. Here's the tender. So let's go ahead and unwrap these. Check that out. We have our crew members here. Cab detail. Nice grab irons, lots of detail here. Very cool. So let's check out the tender next. Very cool. The Lion Master series was first seen in the 2001 Volume 1 Lionel catalog. Even though there are some conflicting introductions, even on the Lionel website, if you search the engine's part number, it shows you it was last seen in the 2001 Volume 2 catalog, being the most recent. And if you go to the Lionel history page, it actually says it was introduced in 2003. So a little bit weird, but actually confirmed Indeed, it was seen first in the 2001 Volume 1 catalog. Lion Master was introduced as a semi-scale offering of the large articulating steam locomotives. It was to attract buyers with smaller layouts to be able to run and have fun with the big steam engines. Lionel took pride in compressing the locomotives in a way that it was hard to tell it was a semi-scale offering without his full-size brother sitting beside it on the layout. Lionel chose to model the big 4664 Challenger as his debut engine, and I suspect that was due to being the smaller of the big steam engines, such as its bigger brother, the big boy, and to make it easier to navigate those O31s. The Lion Master was a weird mix of what I consider Lion Chief and Legacy before those were officially things in the Lionel catalog. It was more legacy in my opinion, as it had lots of similar features found in those engines today. Comparing to many of the day's semi-scale trains, its biggest attribute is it being full die cast construction. The body, tender, trucks, everything. Very hefty engine. Just simply don't make semi-scale like they used to. 
These locomotives were packed with a lot of standard features. It had train master command control. So you're able to run this in the command mode today with cab one, cab two, or conventional transformer. It had rail sounds and crew talk. Also had fan driven smoke unit with Dyna chuff synchronized chuffing. Has the Odyssey system for speed control. Has a wireless tether between the locomotive and tender. No wires between the two. Directional lighting, operating headlight, and classification lights with the backup light on the tender. It does have an electrocoupler on the rear. And another unique item with this locomotive is it has dual motors with the momentum flywheels, whereas a lot of the engines in the day only had one. Four traction tires, again, complete die cast metal construction, lots of separately applied details, a separate builder's plate that's legible, two figures in the cab, a variable ash pan glow, and glass quote unquote windows. These engines with a lower price point than the larger scale locomotives of the day uh, with the ability to run on the smaller curves was very attractive to buyers. These were a big hit when it came out and originally listed at $799.95, which equates to roughly $12.50 in $2022. I'd say not too bad for today's money considering it's a full die cast engine with a lot of features that you'd find in the legacy engines. Closest engine you're gonna to get today is gonna to be around 1750 in the latest 2022 catalog. Not a challenger, of course, but as far as a bigger steam engine with those very comparable options, that's a pretty good deal. So with all that said, let's take a little closer look. So as we take a closer look at the engine, there's no front coupler on this, completely covered up. It almost looks like that this would open up here, but it doesn't, there's nothing behind but has still nice details for the price. You have a bell up here. It swings, although not automatically, it does move. Lots of nice details up on the boiler. Down here on the bottom, take a look at drive rods, the wheels. Also, or get in focus here. There's the builder plates, very legible, very nice. Grab rails. And then back at the tender, again, you can see another builder's plate that's illegible. And bottom here, come to the back, we have our backup light. And I'm gonna see if this lights up here, this little red light when we power it on, I'm not so sure yet. Now, what made these engines operate on those tighter curves is if you can see the middle three trucks there or axles i should say are flangeless and that allowed it to navigate around those tighter 031 curves and besides that in the front both these trucks here are independent of one another where we get the articulating part of the engine that allowed it to again navigate those tight terms. There's the coal load in the hopper, or tender, I should say. Very nicely detailed engine, considering that it is a semi-scale model. So with that, let's power it up and uh, take it for a run.